Hi, welcome back to Mighty Little Green Machine. Today's video is going to be a little all over the place. Uh, I'm going to cover a, a, a quite a few things, things I've learned so far in my first month of doing the side work about quoting the jobs, how the jobs turned out, uh, expenses for the jobs, and things that I've learned hauling my tractor already, and things that I've learned from breakdowns and stuff like that. We're going to be building, uh, I'm going to be putting together a parts kit and, and we'll go through all that and I'll explain to you why. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to try and keep these things in some semblance of order, uh, but they're kind of all over the place as to what I'm talking about in the video. So hopefully you can kind of stick with me. Um, so things that I've learned in this first month. Um, one of the things that I just learned is take into account how much fuel I'm going to burn when I'm doing an estimate. Now, I know that sounds like common sense. Obviously, if you burn more fuel, it's going to cost you more. But um, on Friday, when I did the brush hogging job, it took me about six hours and I burnt 10 gallons of fuel. Um, diesel prices right now are $4.69. So that cost me about $47 ish in fuel to, to do that brush hogging. Now on Saturday, I did 10 hours worth of work with the tractor, with the rototiller and the, um, uh, landscape rake and the bucket. And I only burnt about three and a half gallons. So it cost a lot, you know, a lot less in fuel. It was like $18 ish. So. That really cuts into the profit when you look at, you know, the same amount of time and what I, what I quoted and all that. So I definitely need to take that into account depending on the job I'm doing. Now I have found so far that anything that I've done with the rototiller, which is my only other three point hitch attachment that uses the, the PTO, um, it doesn't burn nearly the fuel. So I'm averaging about the same amount of fuel for each job or the same amount of time on all the jobs I've done so far that didn't include the brush hog, which is about three and a half gallons. So it's the brush hogging jobs I'm going to have to watch. Um, and a lot of that was because as if you watch the video, uh, it's a lot, it was a lot of up and down hills, pretty steep hills in some cases. The tractor really worked hard that day. So that's the other thing I need to take into account is that I'm going to put more wear and tear on the tractor when I'm doing a job like that, than I am when I'm doing one of these other jobs. So that's the first thing I've learned. The next thing that I learned was obviously I know that, um, the 2025 R the tractor I have now is quite a bit heavier than the 1025 R, but I had bought what I thought to be heavy enough straps. Um, I have chains and binders. I don't like using them. I, I, I bought straps. I run four straps on it. But the other day, uh, when I got to where I was going, I saw one of my straps was loose and it turns out that it wasn't loose. It had actually, it had snapped. It had broken. Now the tractor had another strap on the front. That was the front that it broke on. So, it, you know, and it didn't go anywhere. And I'll be honest, I don't even know why it broke because it wasn't like I stopped short or had it over i just don't know so that gave me a little bit of a wake-up call now these were rated i think for 3500 pounds each obviously that's not enough so what i did and then what else i had for straps were were these straps here um that use the stake pockets the problem is with these is that when it goes in the stake pocket and i go back with it it makes it so that this clip this hook isn't necessarily in it good. Um, so that worries me. And then it's kind of a pain in the neck the way I have to run it through the other stake pocket. So I went online and I found these D rings or these rings. And this goes into the stake pocket and then it clips in and then I can hook to these. So I have one for each stake pocket. They come in a, they come in a set of, um, they come in a set of four and all you do is slide it down in, put the pin through the tightest one,
and then put your pin in and, and put, pin it in. And now, I'll use this to show it, I have a nice good place to, to tie in. So that's going to be much better. So I ordered that. The other thing I ordered was I got new straps. These are uh, 10,000 pounds breaking strength. Um, they are as good, they are as thick as the other ones that I had, but they'll hook differently. So this will now, should be enough now to hold the tractor like, like I want it held on there. So just, you know, safety, obviously, thank goodness I didn't have a problem before. Uh, I think it'll hook much better. It'll be safer. So the next thing I want to talk about is, um, I actually had two minor breakdowns uh one on saturday and one on friday and it made me realize that i need to be better prepared in the field now before i started doing the side work all the work i ever did with the tractor was at my own house so if something went wrong i just ran up to the house and grabbed what i had or or worst case you know took it to the deal and had it fixed but i didn't have to worry about not finishing a job um or or our having to come home and get things. So I've decided to put together kind of a spare parts thing and some more tools that I'm going to take with me from now on. Um, I had a pin come out of my quick hitch, which was what keeps, so when you put the handle up and down, it's what locks it in. That pin fell out. And luckily I was able to steal the pin out of my toolbox on the front and slide that into it to finish the job. But so now what I did was I bought this kit and it has different, I forget the name of some of these, so, but, and it's got the different clips like this. It's also got some pins, some cotter pins, uh, and then it also has a bunch of different sizes of these clips here. I think the kit was $37 on Amazon. I'll put a link to it down below so that you can, you can see what it is. Um, so that should give me enough for these types of things in case that I lose another pin or something like that. So, um, and then on Saturday, I had a hydraulic line start leaking on the... Um, Grapple. Now, luckily I noticed it pretty quickly. I stopped. I tried to tighten the fitting. It wouldn't fix it. So I've still got to fix it. But at that point I was done with the grapple anyway. I was just using it to push through. So I disconnected the, the lines and luckily I didn't lose enough fluid that it was a problem. But what if I had? So I'm not going to run this tractor with fluid that's low. Um, you know, and, and risk doing damage to it. So I've ordered another gallon because I just used the rest of mine topping it up. Another gallon of the, the John Deere hydraulic fluid to keep in the trailer. So if something like that happens, I'll have plenty of fluid to be able to refill it and keep working. Again, hadn't really thought of that before because I always had it at, at my, you know, right sitting at my house. I'm adding a new toolkit to the trailer, which has all different types of sockets and wrenches and screwdrivers. Plus, I'm adding some different pliers. I could have used these needle nose the other day and a pair of cutters and a pair of channel locks. Um, probably a pry bar. And I don't know what else yet. So I'm putting that together now. You know, I was fortunate that I didn't really need any tools to fix it. But what if I had? Again. So I got to be cognizant of that because downtime is going to kill me. Um... The next thing that I have learned is to not schedule myself so tight. So I scheduled three jobs for this past weekend. Um, I had originally scheduled the brush hogging job for, well, first I had scheduled a job down at the end of my road, which uh, I'll be posting that video in a day or two where I had to level it out for, for new grass for them for Thursday, Friday. Uh, then I got this brush hogging job and realized that I could probably do that other job in one day. So I had scheduled the brush hogging job for Thursday, that job at the end of my road for Friday, and then another job to do another rototilling and raking and getting ready for grass on Saturday. 
Well, I thought I could rent the 48 inch uh, rush hog to do the mowing job. And when I found out that I couldn't, I had to go buy one. If you watch the video, you saw what I the used one that I bought that I went through it. Um, but that cost me a day. So it kind of threw my whole schedule off. So I shifted some things around. And luckily for me, the job on my street, they're very nice people. I've known them for a while because I've lived here for a while. And they were very willing to let me just keep moving things around. So Thursday afternoon, I ran down after I went to the brush hog and got a little bit of the work done. And then um, Friday, I did the brush hog job. Saturday, I did the other job. And then Sunday or Monday, actually, they let me come down on the holiday. I went down and finished that job. So I got them all done, but I didn't leave myself any breathing room, any, any time in case something went wrong. Um, I still haven't even cleaned up my equipment and put it away yet because it was just go, go, go. Uh, so I have to do that tonight. But they're just, and, and I didn't leave myself any time in case something went wrong. So I'm going to spread out the jobs a little bit more, you know, because I, because I do work full time and I don't have a lot of time. I had taken vacation days for Thursday and Friday, luckily. Um, so I, I learned that as well. So that's another thing that I've learned so far. The other thing that I'm going to add is I'm going to add a spare key to the tractor. I have not forgotten my key yet, but I have to take my key out of my tractor uh, when I trailer it because it, it ends up blowing out of the ignition. I haven't, it didn't lose any yet, but I eventually would. Now, I usually throw it in my truck, so odds are that I won't ever forget it, but sometimes I do put it in my pocket, and if I end up changing jeans and forgetting to grab it, the tractor's useless when I get there, so I'm going to throw a spare key in as well. Just trying to think of things that could slow me down. Uh, I'm going to put a quart of engine oil in there for the tractor just in case. I may put some coolant in there. I don't know yet, because the other thing I have to worry about is I'm going to put it all in the, in the tongue box. The problem with that is, is it gets heavy and it gives me a lot of extra tongue weight. So I have to be careful with that as well. I've also kind of realized now that I'm going to end up needing a bigger trailer. Um, this one's an 18 footer and it takes everything I have to get the rake and the, and the bucket or the grapple and the rototiller on there. It fills it front to back. I, I don't have enough room to really do it the way I'd like. I, I can do it and I've done it and it towed fine and it, and all that, but Eventually, I'm going to have to think about getting a, a larger trailer so that I don't have to make multiple trips. Okay, so let's talk about the four jobs that I've completed so far. First job was, you've seen the video already, or hopefully you've watched it, but was the where I put in the new drainage and did the, widened the road for, made the road for them and widened it and then spread the product. Now, here's another thing I've learned. It's not always going to go the way you want it, and sometimes you're going to have problems. We had a really big rainstorm the other day, and the top of that project, the top of that hill where I started the drainage, washed out. I'm going to have to go down and dig some of that material out of there and put gravel in there now uh, to, get that, to get that corrected so it does it. I have the same problem at my house. I have to do the same thing. <clears throat> it's going to take me time. It's going to cost me some money. So... If you remember, I, I quoted 10 hours on that job. I completed it in five. Those extra hours now are going to help me to cover my expense on repairing that problem. But it's something that you got to take into consideration. Things go wrong. I stand behind my work. You know, I rely heavily on word of mouth already. And so I can't not do it. I wouldn't anyway. It's not in me. But so you got to keep that in mind. You know, is it, is, is it going to cost me extra? Um, I'll still be okay on it. I needed gravel for my own road that you've watched me working on so far anyway. So in this case, I'll have it dumped here. And because it's on the same road, I'll just bucket down a bunch of buckets instead of trying to split it and all that and use whatever gravel I need out of my gravel to fix it and get it done. She's very happy still. She's um, happy with the, the fact that I'm going to come fix it and it's not going to cost her anything. So then my second job <clears throat> that I started and then ended up finishing as my fourth job was right across the street from that project. And you'll, that video will be going up in a couple of days. And it was a hill and it was uneven and there was a depression 
And so I had to go in with the backhoe and dig out the depression to make sure there was no more organic matter, stumps and stuff like that left in the bottom of that hole so that it was going to continue to drop because it made no sense to level all that out. Uh, then I rotokilled the whole thing and then I spent several hours with the landscape rake getting it leveled out and pulling all the debris out. Um, it took me probably a good half an hour of experimenting to figure out how I was going to do it. There was a lot of soil and I wanted to leave the soil, but because there was so much and it was damp, it was getting hard to level it out. So it ended up coming out nice. The customer's happy. Um, I quoted 10 hours on that job. It took me six. So again, I, I, I made the time back up that it took me to load and unload and all that stuff. Okay, so job three. And again, this, this, this one was kind of also what showed me I overbooked myself. Um, unfortunately, Thursday night, my wife broke a tooth. And I had to take her to the dentist. I didn't know when on Friday. And Friday was the day that I was doing that brush cutting. And because I had scheduled myself so tight, I had no extra time to finish that project. And he needed it done. Um, so I was going to have to finish it one way or the other. So I ended up doing a couple of hours there, then leaving for two and a half hours to go help take care of my wife and then coming back and finish it. Uh, now I got it done and I got it done well before dark. I quoted 10 hours on that one. It took me about six, but again, that one cost me a lot more in fuel. Um, I'm charging a hundred dollars an hour. It was, you know, $50 in fuel. So that was a half an hour that was gone because of how much it cost in fuel. And that one had some travel time <clears throat> going back and forth. So it, it evens itself out in the end. And then job number three was a job in that I had the kind of the same idea as down the street, but much more open, much easier. The only difference was it was a lot more bony, the rocky. Um, and I didn't film this one because it was so similar to it was so similar to the one I'm doing down the street. I do have the final results that you'll see in this video. Uh, I'm going to kind of combine it in there to show you. Um, but I had a little bit of downtime because the the rototiller came off of the hook a couple of times. I got to figure out what I'm doing wrong with that. I think I know. I think it's just dropping it too far. I got to keep it a little higher. But um, and then the the quick hitch the handle disconnected and so it wasn't locking it in and i had to fix that before i could go any farther plus it was super hot so i, I uh, you know even though i was for most of it i was riding around in the tractor i was cooking in the sun so i had to take a lot of water breaks but that was uh half an hour each way for that one and i wasn't able to get there until <sighs> 11 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock, because I had some things I had to do first in the morning. Again, scheduling myself too tight. But I was able to complete it by 5. So it took me about 6, 6.5 hours with travel time and all that. I had quoted 10 on that one as well. And, you know, it all worked out well. So for my first four jobs, I'm very pleased, considering that I've never actually did stuff like that. Now... The good news for me is I have a full year of working on my property in the tractor, doing a lot of very similar jobs. And I, so I kind of have a feel for how long it takes. And I did, I have worked for a landscaper in the past, you know, so I kind of, I have an idea of all that. So it's worked out well. Do I think that it's going to go that way in every job? No, I'm going to hit one, you know, at least one down the road that's going to end up taking me more time than I quote because something's going to go wrong or there's going to be something I don't see or something I miss. You know, the other thing too is right now I'm going out and doing estimates on all these jobs. So that's time. I got to go look at these. I take pictures. I'd sit down and do an estimate. So realistically, it's taking me longer all in than what I'm quoting. But I think it's important me to free it for me to do that. Um, so that I know what I'm getting into. I want to look at the whole job and see what's going on. So super pleased so far. Now, the money that I'm bringing in doesn't include any taxes out yet. So I've got to, I've got to take care of all that. Don't forget, there's expense to this as well. There's going to be taxes. There's going to be, you know, I have insurance that I have to pay. I, the fuel, obviously, 
wear and tear on the equipment, that all comes into play. So, you know, I'm fortunate right now in that this isn't what I do for a living. This is what I do on the side, and it is doing what I exactly what I wanted. It's supporting the tractor. I'm hoping it can do more than that eventually, you know. I hope they can bring a little extra money in afterwards, but it's enabled me to buy another implement so far in the first month. You know, there's a few more that I want to add, and I'm hoping that I can generate enough income now, between now and when it gets cold, to be able to do that. I'm going to finish up by showing you guys the video of the finished product along with pictures of the beginning of what of the job I did on Saturday. Like I said, I didn't video it because it was so similar to the job I did down the road. And the one down the road was much more difficult because of all the hills and how tight of a space it was. <clears throat> so I think you'll see more in that. Okay, so I showed you the before pictures. Here's what it looks like after I finished. Came out really nice. I haven't showed the customer yet. Hopefully he thinks it came out really nice too. I just wanted to show you guys first. Around here on the side. Back here, it was really hard. I had to finally just stop raking. There were so many rocks. The soil away in the back here was so bony. Way back here. It's about as good as I can get that without putting some topsoil in. I told you this might be a little all over the place. So a tip that I want to give you is when you are brush hogging uh, or mowing tall grass with your tractor, keep an eye on the front grill. At one point, mine was completely covered in um, pieces of grass, debris. So it makes it so the cool air can't get to the motor. Now, the tractor did not overheat, but it's something you want to keep an eye on. It'll stop it from overheating. Once again, once you overheat it, hopefully you don't even... You know, if you lose coolant, then you don't have any extra. What do you do then? And then you got to sit also and, and have downtime and wait for it to cool down. So that's a little preventative maintenance. I have seen online where some guys have had their, their tractors overheat. So it doesn't kill you to get off at once an hour or so or when you ever stop and just wipe the grass off of the, off of the grill to keep it so it's, it's breathing well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something from all of the things that I talked about. I know I covered a lot of information, but I really wanted to try and sum everything up. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.